Okay, this is utilizing Hess's Law. I'll be showing the calculations uh, that is similar between both classes. So this is what you should be doing for your calculations for utilizing Hess's Law. So here is some example data for those of you who might need the data. Maybe you weren't here. Maybe your group didn't get all the way through, so you're more than welcome to use my data. Um, question number one. There's our balanced equation, NaHCO3 solid. You've got to put the states of matter on here. Put HCl yields NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. And I'll show you how I got the green number. So since we have a reaction that's endothermic, then the reaction has energy that's released by the solution and absorbed by the reaction. Okay, that's why it got colder. Then what we need to do is we need to calculate for Q. Now, we took a solid, we dissolved it in a liquid hydrochloric acid. And so I need to add both those components into it. That's why my, my N, it says N instead of M. My N is the addition of 2.58, the solid, plus the 49 milliliters of HCl. We're assuming that it has basically the same density as water, which I mentioned in the prompt. So we take that times 4.18, which is specific heat of water, times 17.4 minus 21.4. Because again, we said that the temperature dropped on the first reaction. We're going to get our Q. It's going to be negative because I had a temperature drop on there. And then what I need to do is I need to divide by 1,000 to get kilojoules because it said that I wanted kilojoules. Then it says to calculate the number of moles of sodium bicarbonate and hydrochloric acid used. And the reason we need that is because we got to figure out who is limiting whom. If you go to the to our balance equation, you'll see that um, this is a one-to-one -one ratio between the two of them. So I start with the 2.58 grams of NaHCO3. And when I do my molar mass, it weighs 84.01. I put that on the bottom to get rid of grams. And I'm going to calculate 0 0.0307. Now, you know how to do that. The next part is new to you with the HCl. And so I've taken my 49 moles, milliliters, of HCl. And I need to convert it over. So 1,000 milliliters equals 1 liter. And then my molarity was 1 capital M, which is 1 mole per 1 liter. And when I do the math, I get this number right here. So it's asking for who the limiting reagent is. And so I'm simply going to compare this number here back to this number here. This is my smaller number. This limits the reaction because my reaction, when I wrote the balance equation, was a one-to-one -one ratio between these two here. So that answers the next question that this is my limit to agent. So it asks, was the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium bicarbonate endothermic or exothermic? Hopefully you said endothermic since it got colder. And since it's endothermic, then the question comes down to what is the sign for delta H? So new material here. When I have an endothermic reaction, my delta H is going to be positive. Okay? Because there's a relationship between the Q and the delta H. So when I have a negative Q, I have a positive H. And vice versa. So then the next question was, which bonds are stronger? So here I have an endothermic reaction. And I'm going to find out that my reactant bonds are stronger. Question number nine. Calculate the molar enthalpy delta H, which is kilojoules per mole for the reaction. This is why you need a limiting reagent. Because this has to be based off of your limiting reagent. So I have delta H equals negative Q over moles. So I'm going to take the number that I got in kilojoules which is a negative 0 0.863, put it in parentheses, and drop that negative sign on the outside. I'm going to divide by 0 0.0307, and I get 
28.1 kilojoules per mole. And that's why on page one, you saw this number because the next question says to add that number to your balance equation in question number one. On to the next reaction. Here is your balance equation for reaction number two. Don't forget your states of matter. Then the question asks, the final temperature of the resulting solution was higher than the initial. So does this mean that it was absorbed by the reaction or released by the reaction? Well, hopefully you said that the energy was absorbed by the solution but released by the reaction. Then we're going to set up question number 13 just like we did earlier. We have the 2.51, which was my mass of my solid, plus my 50 grams of my solution. Here's my specific heat, and here is my change in temperature. This one, hopefully you realized, was getting warmer. So I'm going to have a positive change here. I calculate 813 joules, I divide by 1,000, and I get 0.813 kilojoules. Just as we did before, we've got to convert the amount of Na2CO3 over 2 moles. Here is my molar mass of it, 106. And I'm going to get 0 0.0237. With the green one, which is the HCl, similar calculation what we did earlier, converting your milliliters to liters, and then converting out and figure out how many moles that represents. I compare these two numbers here because again they are a one to one, one to two ratio. It's a one to two ratio, but uh, this is still limiting because two times 0 0.0237 is still short of 0 0.050. Okay. And since our temperature went up, hopefully you said it was an exothermic reaction. If it's an exothermic reaction, that means that my product bonds will be stronger. And since it's an exothermic reaction, my delta H will be negative. Then we're going to figure out our molar enthalpy. We're going to take our negative 0 0.813 kilojoules and divide by the moles of the substance we have. And we're going to get this number here, negative 34.3. We're going to add that number onto our equation. Last thing, analysis. So this is kind of new to you. What we're going to do is we're going to take the two equations of the two reactions we use in the lab and we're going to combine those together. It's like systems of equations in math. I'm going to want to cancel out items on opposing sides and simplify my overall reaction. So think systems of equations like you do in math. And so I'm going to multiply my first reaction by 2, and I want to reverse the second reaction. So here's my first reaction. I multiplied everything by 2. And hopefully you notice I multiply my delta H by 2 as well. And then I'm going to take the other reaction and I'm going to flip it. And when I do that, notice when I flip it, I lose my negative sign. Okay. So, oops, that's what I want to do. Hopefully you notice that we have similar things on either side. So here, here here. And this is what we're doing. We're going in here going, okay, I have one and we have one. So I cancel out like terms on opposing sides of the arrow and then I simplify that. For my delta H, I'm simply just going to add these two together and I get 90.5. Question number two says calculate the percent error, which is accepted minus experimental divided by accepted. So your experimental is 
my accepted is 91.3. When you sit here and apply it, I only get 0.87% error. So you need to identify one error in your procedure or the assumptions made during lab to assess for your error. If you have a minor error, you don't have to have as much of an error as somebody who has a substantial error. So think about it. If you're producing a large percent error, what did you not do so well? How could you improve that to knock that percent error down? Great job, and this is your help for your Hess's Law.